so today we shall discuss about the introduction to crystals concrete and analysis by stress concept learning outcomes so at the end of this session students will be able to understand concept of crystals concrete and analyze stresses at top and bottom by stress concept introduction to crystals concrete a crystals concrete psc we usually denote it as psc member is a member of concrete in which the internal stresses are introduced in a planned manner so that the stresses resulting from the superimposed load are counteracted to a desired degree in order to get the maximum advantage of pre-stress concrete member it is necessary to use high tensile steel wires concrete used for the pre-stress concrete should have a cube strength of 35 newton per mm square for post tension system and 45 newton per mm square for pre tension system so post tension system is one in which uh, we cast the concrete first and then we pass the tendon through the uh, ducts kept in and then it is tensioning is done in pre tension wires are tensioned first and the concrete is poured after getting concrete uh, getting hardened we cut the tendons to transfer the stress by bond action then high strength concrete is necessary for the following reasons since large pre-stressing force are applied to the member by at the tendons the high bearing stresses are developed at the ends by the anchoring devices the anchorages are generally designed to be meant for use only for high strength concrete bursting stresses liable to at the ends of the beam because due to this pressing there is a bursting stress perpendicular to it cannot satisfactorily resisted by low strength concrete when the stress transfer to the concrete has to take place by bond action the concrete should have a high strength high bond stress which can be offered only by high strength concrete so more the concrete the strength more is the bond stress then shrinkage cracks will be very little when high strength concrete is used due to high modulus of elasticity high strength concrete the elastic and creep strains are very small resulting in a smaller loss of pre-stress in the steel reinforcement by using high strength concrete the cross sectional area required for the member members will be reduced resulting into a considerable uh, reduction of dead load moments particularly in case of long span beams high tensile steel wires are used in the pre-stressed concrete work are called tendons high tensile steel should be used for following reasons the mild steel used in the ordinary reinforced concrete has a yield point of 200 newton per m square to 300 newton per m square if such steel wires are used if even it is subjected to a stress of say 200 newton per mm square at the stage of tensioning it is observed that due to creep and shrinkage of concrete the net tensile left stress left or will be extremely low in the design of pre-stressed concrete member the estimated loss of pre-stress due to shrinkage of concrete and creep of concrete and steel uh, is at the order of 200 newton per m square but high tensile steel wires having ultimate strength 2100 newton per m square and if initially stressed to 1000 newton per m square there will be still large stress in the reinforcement uh, after making the deduction for losses of pre-stress comparison of pre-stress concrete beam with reinforced concrete beam in rcc beams the concrete in the compression side of the neutral axis alone is effective the concrete in the tensile side of the neutral axis is ineffective but in pre-stressed concrete beam the entire section is effective reinforced concrete beam are generally heavy they always need shear reinforcement besides the longitudinal reinforcement for flexure the pre-stressed concrete beams are lighter 
by providing a curved tendons and pre compression a considerable part of shear is resisted in reinforced concrete beams high strength concrete is not needed but in pre stressed concrete beams high strength concrete and high strength steel are necessary high strength concrete is needed to resist the high stresses at the anchorages high strength steel is needed to transfer the a large pre stressing force <coughs> in reinforced concrete beams there is no way of testing of steel and concrete in pre stressed concrete beam testing of steel and concrete can be made while pre stressing reinforced concrete beam being a massive and heavy are more suitable in situation where the weight is more desired than the strength pre stressed concrete beams are very suitable for heavy loads and long spans and they are slender and artistic treatment can be always easily provided to them even if minute minute cracks occurs when overloaded such cracks get closed when the overload is removed the deflection of the pre stressed concrete beam are small the reinforced concrete construction does not involve any auxiliary units but pre stressed concrete construction needs auxiliary units like pre stressing equipment and anchoring etc pre stressed concrete members are designed on the basis of assumptions given below so these are the assumptions a transverse plane of the member will remain plane after bending when within the limits of the deformation taking place hooke's law is applicable to the concrete and steel components the stress in the reinforcement does not change along the length of the reinforcement the stress change changes like take place for the concrete component only variation of stress in the concrete uh, reinforcement due to changes in the external load is ignored so this is general principle analysis of pre stressed concrete beam here we have taken a rectangular cross section having span l and this is external loading this is pre stressing force p acting at the centroidal axis so figure 1 shows a a simply supported beam pre stressed concrete beam of rectangular cross section wherein you will find a uh, having a tendon provided through its centroidal longitudinal axis let beam be subjected to an external load system loading system let p be the pre stressing force applied to the by the supplied by the tendons and due to this uh, pre stressing force the compressive stress induced in the concrete fa it is p by a where a is the cross sectional area of the member <coughs> if due to dead load and external loads the bending moment at the section is m the extreme fiber stresses at the section due to bending moment alone fb is plus or minus m by z where z is the modulus of section of the beam hence final stress at the top and bottom of the section we will get f is equal to fa plus or minus fb that is p by a plus or minus m by z the stress at top it is p by a plus m by z and the stress at extreme stress bottom stress will be p by a minus m by z the stress due to direct load bending and final stresses are shown in figure 1 the stresses due to direct load bending and the final stresses are shown here the cross section and this is p by a that is the actual stress and this is m by z bending compression at top bending tension at bottom therefore plus and minus here so p by a plus m by z at top p by a minus m by z at bottom so this p by a plus m by z should be less than the permissible bending compressive stress of concrete and p by a minus m by z should be greater than 0 that is there is no tension so therefore entire concrete section is taking the load whereas in rcc only 50% is taking the load so let us deal with an example 
A pristress concrete beam 400 by 600 section is has a span of 6 meter and is subjected to uniform distributed load of 16 kilo newton per meter including the self weight of the beam, the pristressing tendons which are located along the longitudinal centroidal axis provide an effective pristressing force of 960 kilo newton determine the external extreme fiber stresses in the concrete at the mid span section. Solution area 400 by 600 that is 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 newton per m, uh, mm square it is area then modulus of section z it is bd square by 6 so which works out to be 2.4 into 10 to the power of 7 mm cube. Now the maximum bending moment is wl square by 8 because it is udl it is 72 kilo newton meter direct stress due to pre-stressing force that is p by a it is constant so that works out to be 4 newton per m square and extreme stress due to bending it is plus or minus m by z so that works out to be plus or minus 3 newton per m square the final stress in the extreme fiber will be as follows though it is f a plus f b at the top that is 7 newton per m square and at bottom it is f a minus f b therefore it is plus 1 newton per m square. So this is the stress diagram this is cross section rectangle this is actual stress then this is bending stress plus at top and minus at bottom then this is final stress. So this should be less than sigma cbc and this should be greater than 0 or equal to 0. Review questions. So a rectangular PSC beam is subjected to a pre-stressing force P alone uh, along with the centroidal axis subjected to a bending moment M due to lateral loading. So axial stress induced in the beam is these are four options you have to take choose one of them and bending stress induced again there are four options you have to choose one of them and resultant stress induced at the top is again four options you have to choose one of them. So first actual stress is P by A then bending stress is M by Z and resultant stress at the top is P by A plus M by Z. So these are references used for preparation of this particular presentation. Thank you.